Hey, Wes here, Airstream Wanderings. Thanks for joining me today. Just recently I was talking to my wife and I was telling her, I've got buckets loads of clay in the garage and also in my workroom in the basement. I probably have enough clay to last me my entire life. I don't need any more. And she agreed, she agreed. Well then, run into someone named Amy. She tells me about clay that is just kind of across town. I live near Minneapolis. This is in St. Paul. Sounds like good clay, clean clay. Normally I have to drive all the way to Arizona. And this is just like an hour away from my home as opposed to 1,500 miles away from home. How could I say no to something like that? Who knows? Maybe this is the perfect clay we are all looking for. It might be ideal for everything I want to do. So here I am, down by the Mississippi River, not too far from downtown St. Paul, and on a little bit of a clay adventure. So let's go check it out. Here is a nice little stream, nice clear water. And as promised, there was some clay-like shale right over here. So this is the stuff I'm gonna dig and try out. Up above you can see some dirt, silty stuff, kind of a mixture with some gravel and whatnot. Then as you work your way down over here, you can see a pretty clear line. And then below that, looks like pretty clean clay. It's a little hard to tell at this point. Get it wet, it's kind of slippery. Doesn't feel gritty at all. It's kind of hard, so it needs to be ground down. Here we go, that ought to take care of me for a while. So this is the first sample of clay that I got. And then just below it, you can see that there is another layer of sediment. I'm not sure if that's limestone or hard sandstone and then below that is another layer that looks like clay looks a little bit different but very similar so who knows maybe that will prove out to be very different so i'm going to get a sample of that too Here's the trail near Lilydale, or St. Paul, Brickyard Trail, called Brickyard Trail because they actually made bricks. And so here is the trail, and right about there is where I picked up the clay. So collecting this clay was not a big problem. In fact, the directions were perfect. Thank you, Amy, for that. And so now I'll take it home and get it processed, uh, try it out, maybe make a test tile. Uh, and just see how it is to work with and how it fires up and what color it is and so on. And who knows, maybe that uh, this will be a perfect clay for the future. I brought the clay home and this is the first clay, kind of greenish in color. And then this was the clay that was just maybe a foot lower than this. So it looks similar, but bigger flakes, more flaky. Apparently this is kind of a, uh, a shale. And this stuff is relatively hard as clay goes. Uh, if you just put it in water, it would not slake. You need to grind it up. So here I ground up some of the uh, small powdered clay. And actually this has a little bit of about 20% temper in it. And so I'm gonna mix this up and see how that works. This uh, clay will improve more as it sits and fully rehydrates. At the moment, 
you know, it feels pretty buildable, but it does also feel a little bit on the short side. It could be more plastic than it is. Uh, but I think it has some real possibilities. Uh, it seems to have some good wet strength. Wherever you put it, it tends to stay. So it doesn't sag or slump that easily. Um, dark green color, my guess is it's going to turn out to be um, orange. I've also uh, mixed this with a little bit of vinegar and it didn't bubble up. Uh, we have a lot of limestone around here and so uh, I think we don't have a limestone problem and hopefully then less of a spalling issue. I made a couple of tiles. This one has uh, just pure clay. This has 20% sand temper. They both started off at two inches long and so you can see that the temper one has shrunk less. That's what I would expect. Um, a little pinch pot. So I will get these fired and see how everything turns out. These are the test tiles after firing. They obviously turned out kind of brown. This tile has no temper in it. This has 20%, so it shrunk less, but both of them survived. And then this little finger pot, uh, I'm going to test to see just how strong it is. I'm not accustomed to breaking pottery, but let's just see what happens here. So, breaks kind of easy, doesn't it? I'm actually not real sure what to think about this. It didn't get real hot in the firing today. I suppose 1400 degrees or so. I don't think too much more than that, maybe and possibly less. Um, so I think the next step here is to build an actual pot and fire that and see how it comes out. Thanks for joining me on this little adventure. I always appreciate that. Feel free to subscribe and thumbs up and all those things. And until next time, this is Wes with Airstream Wanderings. Wishing you health, happiness, peace and love. Take care. Bye-bye.